The concept of intersectional discrimination is often opposed by policymakers and sidelined in favor of the more desirable multiple discrimination framework due to intersectionality's complexity as distinguishing a case of intersectional discrimination involves the recognition of a completely new ground of discrimination. Courts are unwilling to alter the list of the grounds of discrimination that is recognized by the law meaning that explicit exclusionary policies and practices are forbidden, yet the racialized gendered maldistribution of life chances remain the same or are worsened throughout time argues that racism has been defined so narrowly as to exclude it from blame in the most widespread adverse conditions facing people of color, POC, to maintain the operation systems of white supremacy and heteropatriarchy. These operation systems have contended to reform law when resistance to the conditions of subjection is experienced, but just enough transformation to stabilize and maintain the status quo conditions that center the white propertied male subject and marginalize minority populations. The intricacy of the grounds of discrimination system and the overall organization of government and society in the UK makes the implementation of the intersectional discrimination framework extremely difficult. Exposure to extreme heat can have severe consequences on the human body. When the body is exposed to high temperatures, it tries to regulate its temperature through sweating and increasing blood flow to the skin. However, if the body is unable to cool down enough, it can lead to heat exhaustion or even heat stroke, which can be fatal. Yes, and heat exhaustion can cause symptoms such as heavy sweating, dizziness, nausea, and headaches. If not treated, it can lead to heat stroke, which can cause the body temperature to rise above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius, and this can cause confusion, seizures, organ failure, and even death. In addition, exposure to extreme heat can also lead to dehydration, which can cause further health problems such as low blood pressure, rapid heartbeat, and kidney damage. That's correct. Vulnerable groups such as the elderly, children, pregnant women, and people with certain medical conditions such as heart disease are at greater risk of the harmful effects of extreme heat. To prevent these effects it is important to stay hydrated, avoid direct sunlight during the hottest parts of the day, wear loose and lightweight clothing, and seek air-conditioned environments when possible. Yes, and it's also essential to monitor the symptoms of heat exhaustion, such as heavy sweating, fatigue, and muscle cramps. If someone is experiencing these symptoms, it's important to get them to a cooler place and provide fluids and rest. If the symptoms worsen or if heat stroke is suspected, it's important to seek medical attention immediately. Cultural studies is a new way of engaging in the study of culture. In the past many academic subjects including anthropology, history, literary studies, human geography and sociology, have brought their own disciplinary concerns to the study of culture. However, 
In recent decades there has been a renewed interest in the study of culture that has crossed disciplinary boundaries. The resulting activity, cultural studies, has emerged as an intriguing and exciting area of intellectual inquiry that has already shed important new light on the character of human cultures and which promises to continue so to do. While there is little doubt that cultural studies is coming to be widely recognized as an important and distinctive field of study, it does seem to encompass a potentially enormous area. This is because the term, culture, has a complex history and range of usages, which have provided a legitimate focus of inquiry for several academic disciplines. But you can see from the relatively crooked and narrow streets of the city of Rome as they look from above today, you can see that again, the city grew in a fairly ad hoc way, as I mentioned. It wasn't planned all at once. It just grew up over time, beginning in the 8th century BC. Now this is interesting, because what we know about the Romans is when they were left to their own devices and they could build the city from scratch, they didn't let it grow in an ad hoc way. They, they structured it in a, in a very care, very methodical way. That was basically based on military strategy, military planning. The Romans they couldn't have conquered the world without obviously having a masterful military enterprise. And they everywhere they went on the various campaigns, their various military campaigns. They would build, build camps and those camps were always laid out in a very geometric plan along a grid, usually square or rectangular. Notwithstanding the gains made by Finland, it should also be acknowledged that there are important differences between the UK and Finland's housing, population and public services landscape. In relation to the efforts of the Finnish government in increasing the availability, affordability and adequacy of Finland's social housing stock, social housing accounts for a significant proportion of Finland's total housing stock. 
This differs considerably from the housing landscape of the UK. After the Second World War, large-scale public investment massively increased the social housing sector, but the 1980s saw a large percentage of social housing being sold off to raise government funds in times of austerity. The right-to-buy scheme allowed social housing tenants to purchase their home at a heavily discounted price. And the profits raised by this scheme were not used in the replacement of the housing that was sold since then. Levels of the construction of social housing have decreased due to grants from the central government falling from 39% to 14% such differences between the UK's and Finland's social housing sector offers a challenge towards the implementation of the FHS into UK housing policy, as a much higher amount of social housing is needed to support people in the UK experiencing homelessness or housing precarity.